Hi everyone, today we will be looking at a great book, raving reviews on this book, The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas by John Boyne. Let's begin. So we will be looking at chapter 10 today and our learning objective is to be able to understand how the theme of inequality shown through the characters of Bruna and Schmall. So to begin, I have a question that I would like you to answer. What do you think is inequality? And after you've thought about that, look at the following images. What do you think the pictures are trying to say? So we have pictures of a divide. If you think about inequality, it is a disparity, a divide, injustice that occurs so we have Schmall on one side and Bruno on the other you can see how Schmall his hair is shaven he looks unkept he is um frail dirty and then compare with Bruno who is healthy well-fed well-dressed and then in the second picture, you have Bruno on one side and Schmall on the other. So that great divide, they're divided by bar the barbed wire of the concentration camp. So think about these images. They are disturbing images indeed and really highlight the idea of inequality. So in the film, the filmmakers chose a boy called Jack Scanlon. And the question is, does he look like the boy Boyne describes? So the first picture that we have is, uh, he looks nothing like Shimon. But look at the second one. And I've chosen these images just to get you to understand we are the same at our core you know sometimes we think that the way we dress the way we look um what we have or material possessions make us different but no we're one we're the same humanity at the core and it just you know you just need one thing to occur one thing maybe you fall on hard times and then when you're stripped bare of all the trappings all the money you can then see what you become so the boy jack becomes shimal and he is a very believable shimal So from the description, we will begin to look at how the writer characterizes Schmoll. We will highlight what he's wearing when we go through the extract, what his facial expression is like, what's his hair like, what color eyes do you think he has? Just by the description, 
in the novel then I would like you to annotate or just write down what any specific word or phrase suggests about Shimon and I'll discuss it as well so you can do it along with me. Bruno slowed down when he saw the dot that became a speck, that became a blob, that became a figure, that became a boy. So this is the first time that he is really seeing Shimon. Although there was a fence separating them, he knew that you could never be too careful with strangers and it was always best to approach them with caution. So he continued to walk and before long they were facing each other. Hello said Bruno. Hello, said the boy. The boy was smaller than Bruno and was sitting on the ground with a forlorn expression. He wore the same striped pajamas that all the other people on that side of the fence wore and a striped cloth hat cap on his head. He wasn't wearing any shoes or socks and his feet were rather dirty. On his arm, he wore an armband with a star on it. When Bruno first approached the boy, he was sitting cross-legged on the ground, staring at the dust beneath him. However, after a moment, he looked up and Bruno saw his face. It was quite a strange face too. His skin was almost the color of gray, but not quite like any gray that Bruno had ever seen before. He had a very he had very large eyes and they were the color of caramel sweets. The whites were very white. And when the boy looked at him, all Bruno could see was an enormous pair of sad eyes staring back. Bruno was sure that he had never seen a skinnier or sadder boy in his life, but decided that he had better talk to him. Okay, so let us start on picking this extract. This is the first time that Bruno meets Schmoll. And Bruno is quite naive. He doesn't know that this is a concentration camp and Shimol is actually a prisoner. So he starts to think about this dot that became a boy. And we hear, first of all, that there was a fence separating them. So that divide, that inequality. Then he said, that the boy was smaller than Bruno. You see the disparity happening. And he was sitting on the ground with a forlorn. And forlorn means sad. So he has a sad expression on his face. He wore the same striped pajamas to so the uniform of the Jews, basically, who were in the concentration camp. And... Then he talks about, you know, the uniform, the striped cap on his head. And he wasn't wearing any shoes or socks. His feet were rather dirty. He had the armband, the Star of David on. And then he talks about, you know, the expression on um, Shmuel's face. Shmuel is staring at the dust, hopeless. You know, the hopelessness is really emphasized and then his skin was almost the color of gray so he, he is unhealthy because of course he's not getting the right nutrients or the right food you know limited food and then he talks about he, the eyes his eye color it's caramel sweets he was staring at the ground and he was the saddest boy he had ever seen. So 
So the task that we're going to do is how does the writer use language to explore the theme of inequality in the extract? And this is the model paragraph that I've done. I'm just going to read it for you and then you can use it as a model to do the same one, to do one of, of your own. Please use the comments section to write your paragraph and share it. So my model, the writer uses language to explore the theme of inequality in the extract. Bruno is sure that he had never seen a skinnier or sadder boy in his life. The comparative adjectives skinnier and sadder are used by the writer to underline the key difference between Bruno and Schmoll. That Schmoll is Jewish and thus a member of the oppressed group in this genocide, while Bruno happens to be German and thus a member of the oppressing group. Schmoll is therefore sadder and skinnier because he is oppressed. Now, please use that model to help you so that you can write your own paragraph. So we today so today we analyzed inequality in the boy in the striped pajamas and I go back to this picture and I would like you to really reflect on what we spoke about today Bruna this picture of Bruna and Shimon please think about what do you think the picture is trying to say so in your own words as a plenary can you just write in the comments box what you think? So we've come to the end of another tutorial. Thank you as always for sticking with me and until the next one, stay blessed. And I'll see you in the next one.